Are you about to go on an expatriate assignment and you're trying to decide whether or not you should sell your home or keep it while living overseas? Well, if you are, this video today is for you. That's right. Today we're going to give you the pros and cons of maintaining a home while you are living overseas. We have been expats for about six and a half years now. And for our first assignment, we were in Luanda, Angola, and we did not maintain a home while we lived overseas. So before we moved in May of 2014, we sold our home and we did not have a home base in the U.S. until about two years ago, we bought a home just outside of Austin, Texas. So we have the unique experience of living overseas on expat assignment while we did not have a home base and also while we have had a home base here in Texas. So today we just want to run through what we've noticed over the past two years that have been the good things and the not so great things about keeping a home in Texas while we've been living in South America. But before we get into the pros and cons, if you could just go down below and smash that like and subscribe buttons. It will really help us new YouTubers out. Yeah. All right, let's get into the pros first. Our first pro is going to be that you will have some place to stay on your return visits home. In one of our previous videos, we have already mentioned that sometimes when you travel home for your breaks, it doesn't always feel like a vacation and it can be a little bit stressful sometimes dealing with your family and your friends and trying to manage seeing everyone and also still having time for yourself to vacation. So having your own home base, will help alleviate that a little bit because you won't have any hotel costs or Airbnb costs and you also won't have to stay with family members so that will potentially help alleviate you overstaying your welcome. Sometimes when you stay for one or even two plus weeks it can get a little dicey. <laughs> and it's always nice to have your own bed that you're laying in, your own couch, you have your TV, you can have a setup the way you like it for whenever you do come home. Yeah, you're in your own home, you're not being a guest of someone else's. So there's definitely that financial benefit of not having to get a place to stay while you're home. And there's also the peace of mind of having your own place when you are on a home visit. And the second pro that kind of ties into the first one is that a lot of families during the summer breaks, the non-working spouse will typically go home with the children and, and spend the majority of the summer back in the U.S. That just gives them a place they can stay for months without having to check into an Airbnb or like we were mentioning overstaying your welcome with a family member. Yeah, it's super common that you'll see people go home for long breaks. So not only summer break, but also the winter break, you'll get a couple weeks, sometimes spring break. And we've also seen a lot of families that have children. It's, it's also nice that during the summer, they'll typically go to some camps with some of their old friends. And so just having that, just keeping the place where they grew up and they can reconnect with friends during the summer break it seems to be one of the benefits of keeping a home. Yeah, and the other thing that is can vary wherever you're on an expat assignment, but a lot of the expat assignments that we've seen are in the Southern Hemisphere. So in the summer break there, it's actually cold and there's not a lot to do. And so the families wanna come home back to the US where it's you know summer weather, it's warm, they can swim outside, they can play with their friends, go to water parks. Um, whereas if you just stay in our experience in Africa or South America, it's going to be chilly. You're not really going to be playing outside. And so it's not really fun for the children that do stay because there's just less options to do during the winter times. And so the next pro is something for expats that are going on assignment with a company. A lot of companies will offer a home allowance. And so basically it's a small stipend each month that will go to help you cover the, your monthly costs. Uh, with just maintaining another residence outside. Yeah, it is very small. So we're talking around, I think our company is around $350 a month. So it's not covering your mortgage. It's not covering your taxes. It's just helping you maybe maintain your landscape, that type of thing. So it's certainly not going to cover everything, but it helps a little bit. And our fourth pro is going to be if you are going overseas with a company on an expatriate assignment, it's likely that you might have a little extra disposable income. So maintaining a house back in your home country could be a good opportunity for you to maybe put some extra money towards your home, maybe try to potentially pay off your home or get the mortgage down a little bit more. So when you do move back home after your expatriate assignment, your mortgage is a lot less. So there are some financial benefits as well to keeping that home and using your extra money while you have some extra money to work on paying off that house. 
So those are going to be the four pros that we've thought of that we've kind of found out over the past two years of having a house back in our home country while living in Argentina. So now let's get into the cons, the things that aren't so fun about having a house literally across the world. And so the first con that we thought of is that a lot of times when you are moving overseas, your company will help you sell your home. And so some of those perks, you know, they'll help you, they'll set you up with realtors, they'll help you with the closing and things like that, that can actually be beneficial for you. So before you decide to just keep your home, review some of the benefits of, of the selling process for you that your company will provide, and just kind of weigh, weigh that out and see how, where you land on it. The second con of maintaining a house while you're living overseas is it can just be kind of hard and difficult. Yeah. And what I mean by that is like the constant communication. So we have to have a yard maintenance. So we have to make sure our yard person is coming every other week or however often we need it to be done. And so we have to communicate with them to make sure they're coming. We might have to communicate with someone to do pest control. There's a lot of things that you don't think about when you're living in the house that become exponentially more difficult communication wise when you're living so far away. For example, if you're living in a different time zone. And another thing to think about is payment of services. So a lot of times if you have someone come do work at your house, you'll just pay them by check or cash or a Venmo even. Um, but those options aren't available to you when you're living in a different hemisphere. Even Venmo, a lot of times internationally, we can't use it. So we have to come up with alternative ways. So everything you have to do to maintain your home just becomes a little bit more difficult because of the distance that you're dealing with. And so one thing that would be really easy to overlook is mail. So <laughs> in the U.S. we get tons of mail all the time. Um, you can put your mail on hold for, is it 28 days or a month? Mm -hmm. You can basically put your mail on hold for a month at a time. And then at that point, they'll deliver a month's worth of mail to you. Uh, so you might need to get, find a family member or friend that can help you out and once a month go to your house and just collect it and put it inside for you. Yeah, we've been very lucky. My mother-in-law, Andrew's mother, they live not too far away from us. So once a month, she's come and collected our mail. And we were obviously stuck in Argentina for the entire of 2020 so far, so for about 10 months. And when we got home, our dining room table was literally full of mail. Of course, I think there were like three envelopes that we actually needed. It was all junk mail. But that is something that you have to think about is just do you want someone to come to your home, water your plants? Um, there's definitely services out there that you can use that will come do it for you as well. But that's an additional cost. And so the third con is just because you're living overseas, that doesn't mean your property taxes will stop. And so us being in Texas, since we don't have a income tax, we typically have higher property tax values. And so that is something you need to consider when you're living overseas is what kind of property tax bill you might be having every month. Yeah, and it can also come with bills as well. So we keep an internet bill because we have a lot of things on Wi-Fi, like our air conditioning and our heating bills, so we can control that back home or back home in Argentina. So that's a cost that we have to maintain, even though we're not living here full time, is the internet each month. You pay the electricity each month, even though it's very small, the water each month, that type of thing. So there are consistent bills that you're paying all year long, even though you're only using your house for a couple months out of each year. And for our fourth and final con of keeping a home while you're living overseas is it might only make sense to people that have been expats for a while, but it'll kind of make you miss home more if you have a home there. And it might make it harder for you to actually assimilate in your new country because you're always thinking about your home and the way things were back there, or you're always thinking about the maintenance that you have. So it might make it harder for you to actually enjoy your life in your new country because you're always thinking about what life is like back in your home. Yeah, and that's something we talk about all the time uh, while we're in Argentina, actually, is that it, sometimes it can feel like we have two, we're living two lives. You know, we have our life in Argentina and we have our life back here in Texas. And so that can be difficult at times. So that's something to consider whether or not you want that extra pressure or that extra, I guess, stress sometimes while you're on expat assignment. Because as we mentioned in previous videos, going on expat assignment in and of itself can be really stressful and hard at times. So having that added pressure of maintaining a house back home could be adding extra stress that you just don't need when you're on expat assignment. So those were our four pros and four cons for maintaining a house back in your home country when you're overseas on expatriate assignment. 
And we hope we kind of gave you some good, broad things to think about everything from what your future family is going to look like and what your goals are as a family, all the way to finances, whether it's a pro or a con for you financially to maintain a house back home. And this is just kind of a good starting point for you to start a discussion with your own family and make a decision whether or not you think it would make sense for you to keep or purchase a house while you are on expatriate assignment. So give us a like below if you've learned anything new or it's helped you make a decision maybe. And be sure to hit that red subscribe button because we'll be back next Friday with some more expat living content. All right, have a great week, guys. Bye. Bye.